Hello everyone and welcome to KDH Art Class. As you can see, we are going to be talking about visual verbs. Okay. Verbs show action. Okay. In this case, our action verbs, you can see what's going on. And we're going to be working on little stick figures showing action. So you got your running and your kicking, your walking, your jumping, your leaning, your catching, your cheering, your flipping, your swimming. And I did this with kindergarten. And once we practiced a few stick people, then we started grabbing students from the class to be the models. And they had to strike a pose and we had to do a stick figure of that pose. And uh, of course I did that with them. Um, but they really loved being the models and uh, we had a lot of fun. We got a little bit crazy, like we put a little girl doing um, the little straddle splits on one of the tables. Of course, I helped her get up and down and safety, safety. But uh, when we drew it, we drew it so it looked like she was in the air. We made her look like a little cheerleader. And then we had, um, one of our little uh, football athletic guys uh, actually lay down on the table like he was catching the football and we had him pose his arms and he, he was so cute. He held one leg up in the air and he was reaching with both arms and uh, we just had a great time doing that. Again, that was with my kindergartners. And of course, if you can do it with kindergarten, you can do it with any of the above grade levels. And they like this. You can make it more advanced, uh, more gesture drawings for the older kids. But this is just a good start. And I do my stick people several different ways. Uh, some of them I do with the triangle body. Some of them I do with the capital letter I. Uh, it's whatever you feel like doing some of them I don't I just just do a bunch of little lines but it just shows the expression and the movement so to tie it in with their classroom teachers we call them visual verbs all right well let's get started all right. when we're doing these projects I've now started to get a little bit smarter I'm starting to put them all in a sketchbook. <laughs> that way, I don't have to keep a bunch of extra papers around. I can now just keep my little sketchbooks handy, and it makes life easier. Heads up, if you're using permanent markers like I'm going to be doing today, uh, they do bleed through the paper. So I like to take a scratch piece of paper and put it under the next page. So that I can uh, keep my pages clean and then I don't have a page looking like this to draw on next so that's entirely up to you if you use pencil you do not have to worry about that at all you can use anything to draw with this just shows up so much better and I've gotten used to doing that with my students that there you go I would use uh, regular markers, but I have a tendency of spilling things and uh, being around kids that tend to spill things. I didn't want my pictures to get messed up. All right, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. There we go. Oh, uh, let's get this baby focused. I'm still learning and playing around with <laughs> my uh, my new machine here. I went ahead and spent a little extra money that, of course, we don't really have. But since um, we have uncertainty in the world, and I want to make sure my students get to practice art all summer long or over the holidays or if they want to do more I want to make sure I have something out there for them and uh, since I'm kind of picky on my way of 
structure and doing things, I just finally broke down and started making these YouTube channels. All right, let's get back to our visual verbs. All right, the first thing, we just need to make the body. So like I said, you have choices. You could, and I usually always start with the head. I, we'll do two different kind of side by side. Uh, one of them, I do the letter I, uppercase. The other one, I do the triangle. There really is no difference. Uh, this one shows a little bit more of uh, the hips and it'd be a little bit easier um, to thicken it up and turn it into stuff. Uh, this one, it, when I'm in a rush, I just do it this way. That's what I originally started with. All right, the next thing is arms. All right. In this case, I'm just going to, I can put the arms down or I can put the arms up. Notice I add an elbow to them. This is our shoulder. So these are kind of like the pivot points, what moves. Here's the wrist, and then it goes to your hand. In the beginning, I just tell my students, you can go ahead and just make like a little circle hand. Once you have the circle hand, if you want to get a little bit more fancy, you can start adding lines for fingers. But, like I said, we start simple. Same with same thing with the legs. So we, here are our hips. Okay. And you have your knees. And your ankle. And for the foot, I just tell them they can do like a little oval. Okay, if you're looking more straight on. Or longer if you're looking at it sideways. Okay. That way, you kind of have the basics. And I'm very, very bad about forgetting to add the neck so don't forget to add your neck okay same thing over here the arms are kind of the same okay. you add your hands and uh, the knees the ankle the foot okay. the knee maybe we'll bring it in the foot's bending down oh and there we go the neck so once you have kind of the body and the understanding then you just have to look at what is your person doing and this is where the action comes in so once again i move my paper down and i'm ready to go so walking versus running okay. starting with the head and we'll just do the letter I so then you can see the two different legs All right. walking you're much more relaxed your arms are probably just kind of like slightly bent All right. don't forget your hands those are your elbows again your shoulders up the neck okay. and your legs are going kind of in that direction. Oop, I kind of messed that little foot up a little bit, but that's okay. There's my knee. I'm having problems with feet today, aren't I? All right, you get the idea. This person walking, and of course I spell it out: W A L. K I N G so that my students are not only looking at the verb but they're practicing spelling it. Okay, so walking or even walked or walk, you know, however you want them to know it. When I was working with my kindergartners, I pretty much told them ING meant action for almost all of it. Alright. Course, they'll, they'll throw out king ring and stuff like that 
Yeah, they're smart. That's all I can say. You just have to <laughs> smile at the smart ones and just remind yourself and said, that's pretty smart. So, most of the time, ing gives you your action verb. Hey, okay, so, now, you notice I'm already starting to tilt the head a little bit on this next one. Okay. We have our letter I. And when you're running, you start noticing what are my arms doing. And I actually had my kindergartners make the pose and look at themselves to figure out, you know, oh, when I'm running, I have my little elbow bent and my arm is bent more than walking. Okay. And it swings backwards more and comes down. Okay. In this pose and you just see them all like hit that running pose some of them ran in place cute as can be all right and then you have a bigger bend in the knee right. and depending on how fast they are and how high they can kick back really stretch their stride and you have yourself a little runner your walker is on the ground. My runner is usually up in the air. Oops, see I forgot the neck. And then you add a, a few little swish marks and voila! You now have run or running. R-U-N-N-I-N-G. All right, so Here's two of our little verbs. Let's do a few more. Right. Again, taking my little paper. I hate wasting paper, but look how cool it's starting to look with all those little speckles. I could do like an outer space thing going on. Right. When, when I need it. Right now, I still need it in between my pages. Okay, so let's kick. All right. So here I have my little person, and they're getting ready to kick the ball, so I'm going to slightly curve my eye. See how it's bent a little bit? Okay. And depending on your little kicker, I just kind of did the walking arms, not quite as bent. Okay. And I'm going to make his feet or her feet facing that direction. Again, there's my knee, elbows, the hands, the shoulders, there's my neck, I keep forgetting, the hips, okay. and they're kicking. So maybe they're kicking a soccer ball or a football. Toes are pointing upward. Okay. It's usually straight, okay. and they're kicking. Or, because I don't know about you guys, but my students love the whole ninja martial arts thing. So I tell them as long as it's not hurting somebody or something on your paper, of course they can have this um, little ninja thing. So I've already lowered the head a little bit. I'm going to do my eye at a diagonal. And the arms get in this defensive position. Now, believe it or not, the side kick, this foot is actually going to be pointing the opposite direction. There's my knee. Let me highlight my joints. Okay. My neck. And the other leg, here's the knee, is going out. Depending on your kick, it will depend on what position your foot is in. I took some self-defense classes, so once upon a time I could kick that high. Not anymore. <laughs> I'm lucky to get this high. All right. So by the time you start adding 
your little movement, maybe your little props, uh, kicking the ball, uh, kicking in the air. You now have kicking. So, K, I, C, K, I, N, G. And I'm usually uh, cueing the kids is like, okay, what are those last three letters? I, N, G. So kind of help with those uh, teachers that are uh, starting to do those uh, blends of letter sounds and stuff. So ing. You got the running, the walking, the kicking, the jumping, the, you know, so on and so forth. So I get them going on that stuff. So they're seeing the movement, they're looking at the words, they're practicing the movements. These kind of skeleton things are actually armatures in art. We like to call them armatures. If you're doing sculptures, it's what's inside the sculpture to help hold it in that place. So if we were doing clay sculptures of people and we start out with some pipe cleaners or Chanel stems, I don't even know what they call them nowadays, um, we would put the position and then we could wrap it with tape or clay, you know, whatever it might be and some of them they just take a thicker gauge wire and they wrap it with a thinner gauge wire just to thicken it up and create their sculptures that way so it's your armature it's kind of your skeleton it gets you started all right let's do some jumping all right. so to recap we have standing forgot to spell that one I-N-G, so S-T-A-N-D-I-N-G, that is an action, so standing, walking, running, kicking, moving on to jumping, and of course our most favorite jump, okay. The I is going to curve, almost kind of like a letter J in a way. Okay. And here's our shoulders. So there's my elbow. Here's my hand. The other one is kind of dragging behind. Okay. Our hips. The legs are slightly bent. Okay. And the ground is way down here. And maybe there's something hanging here. And you put your little ball there for your jumping or slam dunking or just dunking and then there's all kinds of other jumps you can do right depending on where your legs are where your arms are so with this one we're just going to do that one this cute little kindergartner of mine did and that's kind of that cheer straddle jump. Okay. And you want to, of course, keep your arms nice and tight. Okay. And your legs. Toes would be pointing up unless you're in gymnastics and you point your toes. And then you have you're jumping and of course you add your little pom-poms okay. you can always add you know your skirt and your clothes okay. but I will get into how you add the little details later but it just kind of gives you an idea on 
J U M P I N G jumping all right so those are the basics on those and then with enough practice and enough studying your body or pictures you can start figuring out how to do other little stick people for your drawings once you get your little armature set up then you need to put some clothes and some muscles on it and then you can start working on your details right? it's all about the details that's what I keep telling my kids right now all these little visual people they have no clothes on <gasps> that means they're naked so stay tuned for more of my videos where I show you how we start putting the clothes on and start turning these skeleton or armatures into a more three-dimensional looking artwork. I hope you had fun learning about your visual verbs and this is one of our cross-curriculum activities. I like to do this when I'm being observed by the principal. It shows that I'm working on those test subjects, but really, I'm teaching you how to be a better artist. I hope you enjoyed today's activity. Please feel free to go to KDH Art Class and subscribe to more lessons. I will be continuing these throughout the summer and throughout the year and taking the ones that are currently on there and developing them even more. But right now, I just need to get all these different ideas out onto the web so that my students have lots of choices and hopefully they go to other places and learn different ways of doing it because there's more than one way of doing art and it's just a matter of finding your style. Have a great day. Bye.